Hello everybody, welcome back to yet another video of Fikrnod.com Now Fikrnod from studies So today we are going to be talking about the part 4 if you say of the carbon and its compounds chapter because I had posted previously the first two crystalline forms of carbon um, or video. It was a special Saturday video because there were two parts posted in that. And um, I had also posted uh, the coal video. So now we're going to talk about the charcoal. So charcoal is obtained by strong heating of organic carbon containing matter in a closed container in the absence of air. Absence of air. When I say absence of air, what is that one thing that comes to your mind? Destructive distillation, right? Because whatever is heated in the absence of air, you can call that process as a destructive distillation. So the charcoal is basically, how is it obtained? It's obtained by strong heating of organic carbon containing matter in a closed container in the absence of air. So organic uh, carbon, so carbon has to be there because it's a organic uh, matter. It's organic matter. So Container the absence of air in order to break larger molecules into smaller ones. This is called the destructive distillation of carbon compounds. Because carbon co compounds over here is breaking down into smaller molecules, right? And while this process happens, there are three main types of charcoal depending upon the source of carbon compound. Because one carbon compound may give wood charcoal. One carbon con compound may give bone charcoal. Bone charcoal as in probably you can say animal charcoal, right? And if sugar cane is burnt, it may give sugar charcoal. Similarly, for wood charcoal as well, probably if wood is burnt, wood charcoal is made. So it depends on the carbon compound, we can get three such charcoals. Wood charcoal, bone charcoal and sugar charcoal, right? So now we're going to start off with the wood charcoal uh, one. So wood charcoal is black, it is porous and it is a brittle solid. It is prepared by the destructive distillation of wood. See, so in wood, the carbon um, containing organic matter is wood. So, wood is heated in the absence of air in a closed container. Wood is converted into charcoal, leaving behind the volatile um, impurities such as wood tar or wood gas. So, when we were talking about coal, wood, uh, coal gas, coal tar, uh, gas carbon, all of this was counted. But over here, we just call them impurities. Okay. Now, moving on. Let's get to know about the local preparation of coal. So how is wood charcoal made in a bulk? You know, the local preparation of coal. How, how, do, normally, uh, how do normally people make or get wood charcoal in their lives? So wood, by strong heating in the absence of air, gives wood charcoal plus wood tar plus wood gas. And the logs of wood are piled one above the other. A gap is left at the center of the pile. The pile is covered with wet clay to prevent the entry of air, definitely. And some space is left at the bottom of the uh, pile and the pile to allow a little air to come in. The logs are completely set on fire. When the wood burns completely, a grayish black brittle solid is obtained. It is called wood charcoal. So what happens is, woods so a log of wood all of them are piled up and uh, they are covered just because with clay so that uh, air does not come in but little space is left but we're not calling this the destructive distillation of wood to get wood charcoal As i was saying just to prevent the air to come in the whole log of wood, uh, they are tied up uh, or they are covered with clay, of course. And after they are, some air is left. So, because we know that air has oxygen and we need oxygen uh, to burn anything, right? Because uh, oxygen is combustible. So, then it is set to fire and then the logs of wood are completely changed into a greyish, black, brittle uh, solid. 
and uh, that is obtained and it is called as wood charcoal so uh, this is what wood charcoal is known as okay so now let's get to know about the physical properties of wood charcoal so definitely it is a soft uh, black black and a porous solid it is soft black and porous uh, black because uh, when you're burning it the wood it changes into a black and soft and a porous solid it is brittle and it is a tasteless substance it is a poor conductor of heat and electricity it is porous and has a large surface area this makes it a good absorbent of gases and liquids so since it has such a large surface area uh, which also makes it porous right so because due to its large surface area we say that it is a good absorbent of gases and liquids and again it is porous thus it holds air in its pores and floats on water it floats on water why so if a question like this comes like give reason for the following why does wood charcoal float on water well wood charcoal floats on water because it holds air in its pores because it is porous itself and that is why it floats on water so its density is lesser compared to water of course so when wood charcoal is heated up to 900 degrees celsius by steam this is an important point so by steam when it is heated it becomes activated wood charcoal this process opens the pores and increases the absorption of gases and liquids by wood charcoal activated charcoal is used as a catalyst to facil facilitate certain chemical reactions so it is used as a catalyst um, i think you all know what catalysts are right we have learned about that in our previous classes and uh, yeah so to facilitate uh, certain chemical reactions activated charcoal is used as a catalyst as well so again when wood charcoal is heated up to 900 degrees celsius by steam that is an important point it becomes activated wood charcoal so anything if anything is heated up to a certain temperature it becomes activated and uh, we call it activated charcoal as well because wood charcoal is a type of charcoal right it comes under charcoal so we can also call it as activated charcoal or activated wood charcoal so 900 degrees celsius is the temperature it is heated to and um, since wood charcoal is a porous soft and black substance this um, process also opens up all the pores that are present in wood charcoal and it becomes uh, the a uh, good it, th since it's already a good uh, absorbent of uh, gases and liquids it increases the absorption of gases and liquids by wood charcoal right now let's move on to the uses of wood charcoal we got to know the physical properties of wood charcoal which now we are going to repeat close your textbooks and you won't see first it is a soft black and uh, a brittle substance no sorry soft black and a porous substance um it is a brittle and a tasteless substance hmm then was the third one yeah it is a poor conductor of heat and electricity it is a porous and is a good absorbent of gases and liquids and it is porous thus it um, floats on water right it floats on water because it has air in its pores that's right so these were the five physical properties of wood charcoal and of course when it is heated to 900 degrees celsius it becomes activated wood charcoal okay so now let's move on to the uses of wood charcoal what is wood charcoal used why is it used why do we use those logs and set them on fire well there would definitely be some motto be behind it people just wouldn't do it for time pass so the use of wood charcoal is first fuel wood charcoal is used as a fuel it is better fuel than wood because it produces more heat on burning when we use fuel in something the two physical properties or properties we would be looking in it is that this the amount of smoke that is released when it is heated does not 
affect or does not affect the environment around us and it it's uh, it's not that harmful as normal fuels are because if we are using it for camping as well normal fuel or harmful fuel they hurt our eyes because the fire really comes to your eyes right so if there's more smoke but if there is less smoke this wouldn't happen so that is why it is used as a fuel and it is a better fuel than wood because wood charcoal is a better fuel right then wood because first it um the amount of fo- uh, smoke while uh, heating is less which causes less air pollution and more heat on burning as compared to burning of an equal mass of wood so these are the two characteristics that we look in when we say or when we call a substance a fuel and wood charcoal has it all of course so now let's go on to the next thing that's a reducing agent so wood charcoal is used as a reducing agent uh, and this is because it is used as a re- reducing agent um, as in removes oxygen in the extraction of uh, metals from the metallic ores we had also learned this in the uses of coke right coke is used to est- extract the metals from its ores and coke again 98% of carbon Yes, I am right. So it is used as a reducing agent in that, and so is wood charcoal. It is also used as a reducing agent. Uh, that means remove or uh, removes oxygen in the um, extraction of metals from the metallic ores. Then gunpowder. So it is used in making gunpowder and explosive. Gunpowder is used in guns and rifles. So that means wood charcoal. It is capable of. Um, creating an explosion because it is used in explosives such as gunpowder and gunpowder is used in guns and rifles of course then comes high absorbing power wood charcoal is a good absorbent of gases and liquids now when i say wood charcoal is a good absorbent of gases and liquids this was also one of the physical properties of wood charcoal that we came across so when i say this it's a good uh, absorbent of gases and gases and liquids what is so beneficial for it to be a good ab- absorbent of course well one that um, i think it is used for making gas masks now gas mask what happens is it absorbs any harmful poisonous gas around you especially for the people who work in such an industry where they have to wear these masks to save themselves from harmful poisonous gases so this absorbing power really very really helps to save you from any harmful bacteria or gas that may be present around you then second it is used in tablets to cure indigestion and gastric problems the tablets absorb the gases produced in the stomach and thus relieve gas pressure so whenever we have stomach ache it is probably due to acid acidity because the acid that is produced in our stomach is uh, in ex- uh, excess right because when we don't chew our food this is what happens and um, it also relieves gas pressure of course so the gas pressure that is there it absorbs it it absorbs the gas and the acidity everything in your stomach and it relieves the gas pressure so it is used in tablets as well which also makes sense right then it is used to remove color from crude sugar and turns it white uh, remove color again because it's a good absorbent of liquids right so from crude sugar and it turns white so over here crude sugar basically means a raw sugar that um, we get in markets not markets because after before it get gets refined it is called crude sugar so to remove the color from it it is called as crude sugar and that is why wood charcoal comes in handy because it absorbs uh, such uh, bacteria or uh, harmful substances and makes it white then fourth would be it is used in water filters now when i say water filters that means uh water filters what do they do they basically filter the water that we have yes so as i was saying it is used in water filters so in a water filter what do we need we want the bacteria or any uh, bacteria that can be present uh in water 
to be filtered and we get fresh water to drink of course so in the water filter since it is a good absorbent of gases and liquids it absorbs all the bacteria and thus we get clean water so it is used in water filters and removes the bacteria from drinking water that we can drink inside um our body of course right and the last and the fifth point is that it absorbs the foul smell uh, gas produced by decaying food particles in the mouth thus it is used in ayurvedic dental powders so in our uh, for example if i eat garlic right i will have a foul smell in my mouth so to remove that foul smell it absorbs the foul smell in the form of gas liquid or anything that may be present thus it is used in ayurvedic dental powders that removes the foul smell and um, yes and if you ever see wood charcoal written in the ingredients this is why right so with this we come to an end of the wood charcoal we'll have a quick quick revision for that again i will cancel all of this out so that you don't get to see it and we'll have a quick revision first fuel because it is a better fuel than wood first because it doesn't uh, produce that much smoke and it heats uh, better uh, second is that uh, it has a good absorbing power so it absorbs from gas mass water filters crude sugar mm, then what else yeah um ayurvedic dental powders and also tablets it is used in gun gun powders for an explosive and uh, what what will be the last and final one yes a reducing agent that means it removes oxygen while uh, we extract metals from its uh, metal metallic ores of course perfect so with this uh, again we come to an end of with charcoal and now we'll move on to animal charcoal or bone charcoal followed by sugar charcoal and after that we'll come to an end of the whole charcoal chapter and we'll go on to carbon dioxide okay so let's start animal charcoal or also called as bone charcoal now so animal or bone charcoal is prepared by the destructive distillation of animal bones so wood uh when wood was created it is not by destructive distillation it is it is just it is burnt because there is little amount of oxygen which is allowed uh to pass from um, beneath right and a little space is left but in this bones animal bones they are heated or dried in the sun and crushed and then they are heated in a retort closed container in the absence of air that means absolutely no air no oxygen no nitrogen no carbon dioxide nothing at all and a black residue is left it is called as bone charcoal of course so again it is so it is prepared by the destructive distillation of animal bones so what happens is first it is dried in the sun because bones itself they are very very hard so for them to be dried out so that they can be mixed and they can be heated well enough so it is dried in the sun first it is ready to be heated then it is heated in a closed container with the absence of air that means there is no air without air and a black residue is formed which comes as bone charcoal or animal charcoal so animal bones destructive distillation gives animal charcoal so bone charcoal mainly contains calcium phosphate um, it only contains 10 to 12% of carbon carbon is separated from bone charcoal by treating it with hydrochloric acid hydrochloric acid dissolves the calcium phosphate and carbon is filtered from the solution in this form it is called ivory black or bone black animal charcoal is highly porous and it is a good absorbent since it is highly porous it makes it a good absorbent of gases and liquids and etc so again bo bone charcoal only consists of uh, 10 to 12% of charcoal actually uh, it uh, does contain of calcium phosphate so carbon is separated from bone charcoal so that we get the bone charcoal so hydrochloric uh, acid is added and um, it is filtered and ivory black or bone black is received so now let's move on to the uses of animal charcoal so animal charcoal is used as a d decolorizing agent so it is used in in the sugar industry as a decolorizing agent to remove brown color of cane sugar cane sugar again uh, it's almost like crude sugar that we get because normal sugar is brown in color so 
it is used as a decolorizing agent to remove the brown color of cane sugar and it is also used for removing colored uh, impurities from solutions which also shows that it is a good absorbent right then it is used in the black pigment ivory black is used in artistic paintings due to its deep then it prevents dental uh, fluorosis animal charcoal is used in to remove um, excess fluoride from uh, water because excessive intake of uh, flu fluorinated water may cause dental fluorosis so it prevents the dental fluorosis of definitely so it is used to remove it not to add it and the fourth one would be that it is used in um phosphorus compounds that means animal charcoal is used in the manufacturing of a large number of um, phosphorus compounds of course and fifth one it filters aquarium water that means it is used in the filter to uh, of aquarium water which again it is highly porous so it is a good adsorbent so let's uh, again practice i will wrap all of this off or best part I'll use white so you all will not be able to see it it's almost like I'm rubbing it all right perfect now now that you cannot see anything let's do it first uh, decolorizing agent right it removes the brown color from cane sugar and any other substance it removes the color then we learned about uh, the ivory black it is really very black right so it is used as a black pigment hmm then what did we learn okay we also learned that uh, it filters aquarium water and uh, last one or two yeah it prevents dental uh, fluorosis animal charcoal it is used to remove ex excess uh, fluoride from uh, the water and phosphorus compounds will be animal charcoal is used in the manufacturing of a large large number of phosphorus compounds well perfect absolutely right and we are done with animal charcoal as well now we move on to sugar charcoal and we'll be done with the old charcoal chapter but we will be talking about uh, gas carbon as well because gas carbon is something that we get uh, through the destructive distillation of coal but we didn't talk about it then so we will now coming to sugar charcoal so sugar charcoal is the purest form of the amorphous form of carbon it is obtained by the destructive distillation of sugar of course again in the absence of air so that is by strongly heating sugar in a closed container in the absence of air so sugar gain is c12 h22 o11 and through the destructive distillation it becomes 12c uh, plus 11 h2o this is definitely a balanced one uh, that is why we are saying this it's 11 h2o because 11 into 2 equals to 22 and on the other side that the reactant side h22 right so it becomes 22 c is uh, 12 so again it becomes 12 and there is no uh, o is also there and that is why there's uh, 11 so o becomes 11 um, on the reactant side as well as you can see here oops yeah as you can see here it becomes fully balanced so again uh, the sugar cane it is heated by the destructive distillation of sugar and uh, in the absence of air and sugar cane it gives sugar charcoal plus water and uh, during animal charcoal it was only animal charcoal which was obtained after the animal bones went uh, through destructive distillation it is also obtained by dehydration of glucose or cane sugar in the presence of a concentrated uh, sulfuric acid the acid removes water and carbon is left behind so what happens is when you dehydrate glucose and sulfuric uh, acid or cane sugar in the presence of concentrated um, sulfuric acid the acid that is there it removes the sugar and only carbon is left out and that is why we call it an amorphous form of carbon in the first place so some uses of sugar charcoal are there are, there are only three all of these charcoal they are used as reducing agents because they reduce 
any um it probably removes oxygen uh in the uh, extraction of metals from their metallic ores or etc okay so the uses of sugar charcoal are that first it is used as a decolorizing agent again in animal charcoal we said it was a decolorizing agent right we said that animal charcoal was a decolorizing uh, agent because it uh, decolorizes the brown color in sugar that's raw sugar of course right so this is also used as a decolorizing agent it is used uh, in the removal of colored impurities from solutions hmm. then the next one is artificial diamonds sugar charcoal is used to prepare artificial diamonds sugar charcoal when heated to up to 3000 to 3500 degrees celsius becomes artificial diamonds because diamonds normally are really very expensive and uh, the reducing agent is that it is used as uh, as a reducing agent in the extraction of metals from their oxides of course and we saw artificial diamonds can also be created by graphite right uh, when they are heated up to i think 3500 degrees celsius or so hmm i wonder Oh, okay i'm sorry 3000 degrees celsius when um um graphite is heated up to 3000 degrees celsius it makes artificial diamonds as well and so does sugar charcoal so it's again 3000 to 3500 degrees celsius and third one it is used as a reducing agent um as the reducing agent in the extraction of metals from their oxides um in coke it was um metals from their ores in this it's metal from their oxides and in a uh, wood charcoal it was metals from their metallic ores almost same thing only the word metallic is added okay now let's move on to lamp black or soot or kajal so lamp black is an amorphous form of uh, carbon of course and it is it has 99 to 98 actually 98 to 99% of carbon and it is prepared by heating carbon rich substances like oil or kerosene oil in limited supply of air not completely uh, in the absence of air so we cannot call it the destructive distillation of course and the oil burns with a sooty flame so it has 98 by 99% of carbon and the smoke contains a large amount of free carbon the black smoke collects in the form of black powder it is called as lamp black or soot so what is the importance what is the importance of lamp black or soot well in our country right we use kajal a lot not only in our country well all around kajal is something that is important right we see kajal we see mascara we see eyeliners but we also see kajal well kajal is lamp black lamp black is used in our country as kajal so this makes it much more interesting um again it has 98 to 99% of carbon in it and it is prepared by the heating of carbon rich substances like turpentine oil or kerosene oil um with limited supply of air, of course and uh, it is known as kajal in our country in india uh, or any other country for that matter and this is what is written in the textbook it lamp black is used in our country as kajal and uh, the uses of lamp black of course we are going to study about that as well first is uh, making various articles it is used for making black shoe polish black paints black carbon papers black ribbons used in typewriters printers ink and kajal so it is used for that blackish uh, color that it has it is so so rich that it it is even used in makeup rubber industry will be the second one because it is used in rubber tires uh, to increase their hardness and to rebuild it because uh, a lot of people ask why uh, is lamp black used well this is because it is used to increase the um, hardness and the durability and the third one would be the gunpowder it is used in the manufacturing of gunpowder that's it no more information given so it is used in um, various uh, making various articles um what was the second one oops yeah okay uh, i remembered uh, gunpowder and the rubber industry of course to increase its hardness and durability 
Then comes the gas carbon. So what is gas carbon? During destructive distillation of coal or other organic matter at high temperature, the carbon atoms or the carbon particles that are there, they deposit on the walls of the container. These carbon particles are gas carbon. It is a grayish solid. Um, it is a good conductor of electricity and its uses are that it is used in making carbon rods for arc uh, lamps and electrodes of dry cells, of course. So the carbon particles that deposit on the walls during the destructive distillation of coal is called as the gas carbon. It is a grayish solid and it is a good, good conductor of electricity. Again, its uses are that it is used for making carbon rods for arc lamps and electrodes for dry cells. Uh, carbon rods for arc lamps are, um, you know, the lamps that we have in our side tables or anywhere in our house, you know, the rods that are there, the carbon rods. Well, those are the carbon rods for arc lamps. And again, once again, electrodes for dry cells. Very good. With this, we come to an end of charcoal. Now we're going to do some questions. And um, today is indeed a special Saturday. So stay tuned for the next video of carbon dioxide, which is coming up. But before that, let's do these quick, quick questions in front of us. So which of the following contain more than 90% of carbon content? Definitely, it would be the purest substance, which is anthracite, because it is peat, lignite, uh, bituminous and anthracite comes forth so anthracite which of the following is not obtained after the destructive distillation of coal hmm, what what is it coke coal gas gunpowder or coal tar definitely gunpowder right and uh, the carbon particles that deposit on the wall of the container during destructive distillation of coal are gas carbon we just read it right and uh, yes, these are the questions that are front of us. And uh, with again, with this, we come to an end of charcoal. In or stay tuned for the next video of carbon dioxide. Again, today is a special uh, Saturday. Uh, so during sa study Saturday, it is also a special Saturday. Both of them are on the same day today. So we have one more video coming off of uh, carbon dioxide. Oh, in which we will be talking about how the occurrence, the laboratory uh, preparation of carbon dioxide, the physical properties, and basically the whole carbon dioxide part will be completed. So stay tuned for that. And for now, bye.